all the stories you know and love in a me sort of way, bringing religion, spirituality, and who knows what else. Listen, Listen to, to the pastor, pastor with the master battle the thunder, thunder from, from down, down under. under on religion, Hoho's way. Broadcasting from the cottage studio. Welcome to Religion Hoho's way, and as always, I'm your host Hoho. And I tell you what, I'm excited about this episode. I really am. This is this is where it gets good. Okay, I'm just saying that the last episode talking about you know DNA, talking about um, you know, coding, talking about you know the the God protein. That was just foreplay. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we're going to have some fun. I tell you what, this is awesome. It really is. Okay, now look, guys. Woosa. <laughs> This is this is so cool. It really is. This is so cool. We're going to be talking about the theory of evolution. We're going to be talking a little bit about physics. We're going to be talking the universe. We're going to be talking um, um, uh, the, the, the little bit about space time. But at the end, we're going to finish this up and we're going to tie a few things together, even referring back to some of the concepts that we learned in the last episode, talking about DNA and, and, and the sequencing and, and it being the blueprint. But it's even deeper than that, though. That's the cool thing. You know, it's even it's even more than that. And and we're tying it into something that that really is cool. Now, I can't I, I can't reveal what that last part is. OK, I just I just can't. I just can't. Y- y'all's have heard about it. Y'all y'all's know about it. You know, it's it's one of my favorite Halloween episodes that Alex Exum did in the Exum experience. And actually, I think it was live talk. Doesn't matter. Anyway. It's just so cool, you know. Now, here's the thing, okay? I am a fan of, of KISS, okay? Keep it simple, stupid, okay? Because when you overcomplicate things, that's, in a lot of ways, that's whenever things really start to get muddy. That's whenever things, that, that's whenever things really start to get confusing, Okay? When you are going to completely try to alter and change somebody's reality, their perception of reality, you got to be careful, okay? You get, you, it's, it's one step at a time. And sometimes you got to take baby steps. I mean, you really do. Y- you have to. Because when you're doing that, I mean, the person's reality is going to change. Like you're, not, you're not changing reality, all you're doing is trying to change somebody's perspective. Now, granted, perception is reality. I mean, that's what we're taught, right? And, and it's true. Your perception may not be reality, but your perception is reality. You know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of like this. You know, you, you go to your favorite store, okay? And we're we're not going to mention any names about what this, you know, your favorite department store might be, but you know, the option might be something that rhymes with, oh, let's say rhymes with Walmart. Okay. We're just throwing that out there. Just just as a, you know, maybe. Okay. Now, you work in the store. No, wait, we'll start with you. Okay. You go to the store, you're shopping there, you're buying a few things in the store. We want to use the math and then we want to keep it simple. I'm just going to say, you know, you, you buy something, a handful of items off the shelves. Now your perception is that everything in this store, the price is going up. That's your perception because of, of everything in that store, the, the small amount of items that you buy from and everything's gone up. Right. And so obviously Everything in the store, prices are going up. Holy crap, this is ridiculous. You're mad. You're upset, you know. But is that reality? It may be your reality, but that's not necessarily true about all of reality. Because as a manager, as, you know, a department manager, as as one whom actually is responsible to change the price tags in the store, maybe you'll know that only about 10%, maybe, if that, of all the items in the store, the price has gone up. So it's unfair to say that the prices in the entire store has gone up because that's not true. That isn't reflective of reality, but it's your reality. And our own perception, it's how we view reality, and that's what defines reality for us as an individual. So what you're doing is you're not changing reality itself, but you're just trying to alter in baby steps. 
somebody's perception. And sometimes, like I said, you got you got to take small small steps. Now that that's that's not to you know discredit the deep dives because I myself I love the deep dives. I I really do. Deep dives for me it's fun, you know. But sometimes you got to keep it simple. Now, okay, now look, th- this episode, I'm just going to throw this out there. This is going to be fun. It really is. And, I, and I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to try not to dive too deep in, into the weeds on this one. I, I really am. But this is fun. I'm, I'm just telling you, this is fun. And it's not going to be for everybody. I'm just saying, but it is going to be fun. Stick with me, though, because this, this last portion of this episode is going to be good. It's going to be fun. And I'm going to challenge your perception of reality. That's what I'm doing here. I'm challenging your perception. If you already know, then you already know. If you already believe, then you're good to go. That rhymed. That's awesome. But if you don't, these are baby steps that you can use to talk to somebody that has half a mind, half a logical mind. Because this is the thing, though, okay? Fundamentally speaking, science, all of science is flawed whenever they're doing a theory of this or a theory of that. All of science is flawed, okay? I'm a Trekkie fan, all right? Spock is amazing to me. He really is. You know, he's, he's, he's an, a genius. It's so awesome. But one of the things that he says in, in, in trying to figure out a puzzle is once you have removed all possibilities, whatever is left, no matter how improbable, must be the solution. I'm, I'm paraphrasing that because I don't remember the exact terminology, but that's what he's talking about. And so all the signs is flawed because they are starting off with the premise that denies even the possibility of creation, of intelligent design. Now, here's the thing. For me, you know, I, again, this is keep it simple, stupid. Okay. This is one of the things I try to do whenever I'm talking about this kind of stuff. I don't really talk about God per se. Okay. Now granted in the last one I did, I mean, it was a God thing. Okay. I, I brought, I brought that in there, but for the sake of argument, normally what I do isn't talking about God. It's using the more generic. Okay. The prime mover, intelligent design. And yeah, we're all talking about the same thing. I mean, but, but it's your, you know, it's, I'm not discrediting anybody else's belief on this or whatever deity they want to believe in or whatever deity they do believe in. I'm not wanting to discredit any of that. This is just sheer the aspect of science is wrong. They're starting with the false premise, denying the possibility of intelligent design, but it's the only thing that makes logical sense. It's the only thing. Once you've removed all other possibilities, what is left, no matter how improbable, has to be the truth, has to be the answer, the solution. It's got to be. You know, and and that's what makes this so much fun is because we've exhausted all other possibilities. We've thought about this. We've thought it through. It's the only thing that makes any sense. It really is. And we're going to, whoo, this is going to be so much fun. Okay. All right, all right, we, we got to get into it. We got to get into it. We're already like eight minutes into this, and I haven't gone anywhere yet. Holy crap. Okay, hmm. this is so cool. All right, what, what are we talking about? Evolution. Evolution, okay. All right. all right, evolution. Now, I'm sure that you know that evolution was thought up of this guy named Charles Darwin. Okay, now again, he started off with the premise of no possibility of intelligent design. So he's like, this has to come from something else, okay? It had to come from somewhere else. There's got to be some other thing that's the answer to this. It has to be because there's no way that creation is true. There can't be a God. You know, we're thinking people. We don't think in the, we, 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 there's no, there's no place for the mystical here. You know, that's more or less what they're talking about. The difference between, you know, magic and science. But here's the thing though. Okay. Now I'm a movie buff. Y'all know that there's the movie review. Check that out. Okay. It's awesome. It's fun. I have, I have a blast on that one too, but there's a movie out there called the, uh, the sorcerer's apprentice. Okay. It's a Nicolas Cage movie and it's got the dude from, uh, how to train your dragon in it. Okay. Now, one of the things that they talk about in that episode is that there is no difference between magic and science that it's actually the same thing. 
that we are capable of so much more than what science even realizes. Science hasn't even scratched the surface of what we're capable of being and what we're capable of doing. Science has done some stuff, you know, with, with, um, with looking at how our brains, you know, light up, okay, with, with measuring the brain waves and doing different activities. Whenever we activate the spirit in something like, oh, let's say prayer and worship, the mind lights up. We use portions of our mind that they didn't even think were possible for us to use. It's so cool. We were created for so much more than what than, than the reality we're currently living in. But but later, that's 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 a different that's a different topic. So evolution. Evolution, you know, what, what it basically says is that after the Big Bang, okay, when the heavens and the earth were already formed, whenever everything was in place, whenever all of the ingredients for life was here, in one place, at one time, and this little bitty goo, that there was this static spark of electricity, and that was like the clear, and that's where life began as a single-celled life form that had th- three million characters of code called DNA in it. Just saying. Well, I mean, probably not that because evolution it, it grows and grows and grows. But that's what they're saying, though. Okay, that's what they say in the, in this little, you know, that this earthly cosmic goo, whatever you want to call it within that, there was a little static charge of electricity clear. And that's where we came from. It started from there, from that single cell organism. It evolved into something else. It evolved into something else. It evolved into, you know, um, plankton. It evolved into algae. It involved, it evolved into, um, you know, this type of fish and then that type of fish and, and, and continually to evolve into, you know, frogs and other type of fish like that, that were both land and sea, because once we, they went from fish, they went to land animals. And then you have, you know, the, the, uh, the, 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 the sea, uh, plants, you know, spawned into trees and, and made this type of tree and that type of tree and deciduous and pine and sycamore and, and maple and, and evergreens and all this other kind of stuff and, and big giant redwood trees and, and we, we reptiles and birds and, and dinosaurs and, and which came way to this, that, and the other and, and then mammals and, and the ductile platypus. That's how we know that God has a sense of humor because he He's like, let's put all these parts together to see what happens. And we get apes. And then we get people. That's how all of this happened. Okay? That's how it all happened. And this took millions and millions of years i don't i don't even know how many millions of years that they're trying to say that that this took place in but it took place in a in a very long time o- over the course of of a, a millennia millennia who, who knows how many you know a long time is is what they're saying that of of how much time passed from the spark the electric static charge that started life to a a, a vast amount of creatures on this planet living. I mean, we don't even know how many different species of, of, of life there is on this planet. We still have places on this planet, under this planet, species. We are still discovering new species today. This is the year 2022. We consider ourselves smart and intelligent people. There's still places that we have not explored in the jungle. There is still depths that we still cannot reach under the ocean. We are still discovering life on this planet. The amount of species and animals that are here, including even the ones that we know have gone extinct already, is sheer vast. And all of that started, all of these different species, all these different types of life started from one spark. That's what they would have you believe. How crazy is that? But that's what they want you to believe. A millennia of millennia 
this micro change to that micro change, this to that and the other. And that's how all this started. Now, look, I can, I do not believe any at all whatsoever on evolution. I really don't. Why? Because it makes no sense to me because DNA, it makes no sense to me, but adaptation Absolutely. We, we see evidence of adaptation all over the place. Adaptation is, is something that is freaking cool. You know, I mean, it, it, it really is. Adaptation is different from evolution. Adaptation is what has made, okay, um, adaptation is, is what gave the, the, the leopard its stripes and the cheetah its spots, okay? Adaptation has done that but we're still talking about a canine. I'm sorry, not a canine, a feline. Yeah, we're still still talking about a feline. We're still talking about a cat. I'm not talking adaptation. You know, down where I live, our squirrels are basically brown. You go up to Canada, they're not brown. You know, they, 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 they still look the same, but they're different. They're still the same animal. So I'm not talking about adaptation. I fully believe adaptation. Adaptation is what gives you the calluses on your hands. That's adaptation. You know, there was a time in my youth, I, I walked quite a few different places barefoot. I had pads on my feet to where I, I have walked through broken glass and barely even noticed it. It didn't cut me. Why? Because the pads were thick enough on my feet that I, I couldn't do that now. I don't, I, I hardly ever walk outside. You know, I'm, I'm a girly girl now. I step on a little bitty thing and I'm like falling down like it's worse than stepping on a Lego. Holy crap. You know, now, no, I can't do that. But there was a time when I could. That's an adaptation that we have. You know, your skin gets thicker and it builds up and it builds up to where you can do that kind of stuff and not feel the pain from it. That's an adaptation. So I'm not talking adaptation. Adaptation, because here's the thing, adaptation doesn't just happen on on the physical level as far as the pads on your feet. Adaptation can also happen on a microbiology level and micro on on a molecular there we go that's that's what i'm looking for adaptation can even happen on a molecular level if we are put for a prolonged amount of time into an environment that is completely different than what we are used to that's why we have different races is because we have adapted to our environment Our bodies are made so magnificently wonderful that they are able to adapt on a molecular level to their environment. That is so cool. But that's why there's different races out there. But we're all still human beings. We're all still homo sapiens. This isn't the difference between a cat and a dog. This is the difference between one race and another, in people and in animals. It's adaptation. That's different than evolution. Evolution is one species to another. That's evolution. I'm not talking evolution. Adaptation is different. Okay? Adaptation. We see evidence of that all the time. Okay? And that's an easy pill to swallow because we see it. When was the last time you seen any evidence of evolution? In fact, science kind of says kind of loud and clear that that doesn't really happen. You know, it just, it's just, it's not a thing. It can't happen, you know, but we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. Okay. So what, what are we talking next? What are we talking next? The fragility of this whole thing. Okay. That's what we're going into next because life on this planet is fragile. It really is. Okay. Fragility. This planet is magnificently not just made, but placed within the universe, within the cosmos. And we're going to get into physics. We're going to get into that too. Okay. 
but it's 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 if we are any farther away from the sun then then we we freeze and we die if we're any closer to the sun then we burn up and and we die so there's a very fine balance between life Albert Einstein, okay, now he, he was talking about this. This is, I think this might even be an aspect that, well, it's not, not necessarily his theory of relativity, okay? But here's what they talk about in, in, in trying to explain the vastness of the universe. You know, we, we live in a solar system. That solar system is, is made up of a galaxy, and in this galaxy, the, you know, there, there's a, a, a ton of different solar systems, and, and that makes up our little part of the universe. But what we have been able to do is is using technology we have been able to look beyond our own galaxy and 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 see other galaxies how amazing is that that is so cool but what we have seen is the known universe that's what we've seen and this the, the this whole known universe thing that that we we've come to find out or it looks like it appears as though the the nothing you know beyond our you know the the outside of our known universe that, that there's something beyond that and that's a nothing and the nothing is shrinking because the space of nothing between the galaxies is growing bigger because our universe is expanding and that is amazing to me okay that is beyond comprehension like a galaxy of galaxies. That is so cool. But here's the thing. Albert Einstein has, has, has basically used a thought process. Now, look, there, there's other theories in here, and other people have tried to explain this whole entire thing, okay? And, and, and I'm only scratching the surface of, uh, of the information on this that is out there. That's, that's all I've done is just scratch the surface because this is – you know, it's, it, it's, it's beyond comprehension. It really is. Okay, but let's just put it this way. The universe is fragile. Okay, now here's the thing. If, if the Big Bang Theory, we want to get into physics too, but we want to do this after this, okay? If the Big Bang Theory is true, and we all came from a, from a single little compact thing, and then, then heat and, and the pressure within was greater than the pressure that was out, and pfft, the, that's, that's where the explosion happened, okay? Now, that is true. Everything, it blows apart. And the space between, from the center grows, the space between all the objects grows. All of that happens simultaneously. Get away from me. All of that happens simultaneously. That's how the Big Bang Theory works. Now, now here's the thing, okay? The, the, the universe, the balance of the universe is extremely fragile, okay? It is extremely fragile. It is more fragile than the balancing act that you would have to do on a pencil to stand it on its tip. That didn't work, did it? Let's try it again. Crap. That didn't work. Let's try it again. Crap. It still falls because why? The balance is fragile. It is so fragile because if it's completely expanding or contracting, then things change. And, and the Big Bang Theory, if everything is separating, see, here's the thing. Like I just said earlier, with, with talking about our own orbit, life on Earth is fragile. We get any far apart, we freeze. We get any closer together, we burn up. And the universe is expanding. But here's the crazy part, though. The, the, the universe is staying whole. The areas between the universes is expanding. And that's kind of what's going on. And, and it's going on at such a precise rate because any altercation, any change... And, traje and trajectory and expansion and the spaces between, if there is any altercation in any of it, the whole thing collapses on itself or blows apart. The whole thing. The whole thing is constantly in a state of flux and expansion and what have you. That's what we've learned so far. 
Now, if you're going to tell me that, well, of course, you know, it would make sense that the galaxy, each individual galaxy would be able to, you know, stay with itself, that, of course, that it would make sense that the galaxy would be holding itself apart while then nothing that's between the galaxies w- would, would expand. But here's the thing. If the Big Bang Theory is accurate, w- which is more or less what it amounts to is, okay, now, now um, I'll get into that next. Then that means that everything was once its own ball. That everything was compact into its own little, little bang. But then everything that makes up every single universe would have been in one compact space. And so they're like, or at least if that's the case, then everything would have been within its own immediate proximity with the gravitational pull and everything else that it it wouldn't expand beyond one huge galaxy. Mm-hmm. So their answer to that was, well, okay, was it wasn't one big bang. It was several big bangs. Each galaxy had its own bang. And and we're just present in our own little little parcel of the universal real estate that we're in. That's how they that's how they do that, okay? But but I mean, here's the thing though, okay? If you have a huge mass that that explodes to the point of being able to make our own galaxy, then the explosion big enough to blow apart all of these different things would be so impactful, would be so huge. There would be so much heat that would be generated within this explosion that it would literally blow apart each and every particle and nothing would be able to exist. Nothing. And so they're like, okay, well, it wasn't a big bang. It, it was a little bitty bang. And the little bitty bang, it, it kind of blew things apart. And then out of nothing came something. Well, that makes no sense. So they believe not in just one impossible scenario, but they believe in hundreds and millions of different possible scenarios because... We don't even know how many galaxies there are out out there. So they don't believe in one impossible scenario. They believe in many. That's that's how they explain the universe. Okay. Let's get into physics a little bit. Let's get into physics. This is, okay, look, my generation, I'm I'm 40-something, and we were freaking nuts, okay? And, And our parents hated us, okay? We had toys, and playground equipment that was simply put designed to kill us, okay? We had slides that were made out of metal that in the summertime sliding down, it would melt the skin on your legs and your hindquarters, and we called that fun, okay? We had jungle gyms that if you were to fall down, you would get a leg full of of a cinder rock embedded in your skin. We, we didn't, you know, if, if they were nice to you, they might use wood chips. Otherwise, they use cinder rock and they use regular rock. And it was designed to put holes in you. Our parents were trying to kill us. Ooh, I get, oh, I didn't get them. Anyway, we had this, this thing that the, you, you would sit in and it would go round and round and round and round and round so fast and, and, and you would do this for fun until you puked. And that's when the game was over, okay? And then you get off the ride and, 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 and you pushed somebody else round and round and round until they threw up and then, and then the ride was done. And see, for the person riding the ride, their job was to stay on it long enough until they puked. The person who was doing the pushing Okay, his job was to make you go so fast that you flew off because that was a blast and that was amazing. If you hit a tree, bonus points, just saying. That's how we lived back in the day. Physics is amazing. So if you are, here's what physics teach us. 
okay, that if you are on an object that is spinning clockwise, yeah, yeah, so if you're in an object spinning clockwise and then something breaks off from that item, that item that is projected off will be spinning in the same direction as the original object. That means that if the object that you blew apart from is spinning clockwise, then the thing that flies off breaks apart, will be spinning clockwise. That's physics. It's, it's, it's dynamics. It's, it's, um, it's, it's kinetic. Di- and, and, and the spiffy, spiffy word, just throw that in there. And, and okay. It, it's a law of motion. Okay. That's the law of gravity. That's, that's, that's a different law. Some dude that ate an apple figured that one out. No, I'm not talking about Adam, but that's physics. Okay. Physics tells us beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's how motion kinetic energy energy in general, that's how it works, okay? So, okay, so we're all spark, we're, we are all part of our own little bang, okay? And science would have you believe that that is truth, but here's the thing, we already know about laws of dynamics. And if things explode, they explode out, and away, and apart. So everything blew apart. If things were spinning, and we think that they were, you know, that, that, that's what they think, that, that things were spinning, then everything would be spinning in the same direction. Not necessarily the same rate of speed, because the closer you are to the vortex, the, the faster you would spin the farther away, the slower you would spin. So that's 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 one of those things that we're 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 cool with. You know, we're all right with that. Things things may spin differently. They they would spin you round, ride baby like a record round, baby ride round and stuff. But here's where here here's where their theory completely falls apart. Here's where it falls apart. Are you ready for this? We have planets in our own solar system that we can observe rotating the wrong freaking direction. How is that possible? It's not possible. The laws of physics tells us that's not possible. If we came from the same little bitty, then we would all be spinning the same direction, but we have planets spinning the wrong way. The only way to make that happen in in physics and dynamics is if one thing bounced off of another, but there wasn't anything else in our general vicinity that that we could have bounced onto. And if you bounce off of something, of being that type of a particle with so much force and volition that it was capable to change your entire rotation, not stop it, not slow it down, but change it, go in the wrong stinking direction, then that's going to be an impact with so much force and velocity that, it, that, that both items are going to be destroyed. Period. End of discussion, end of story. But they're not because we have multiple, pan- we have, you know, planets that are spinning the wrong direction. There's holes in the theory of evolution and, 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 and in the Big Bang theory. There's holes in it. Obvious holes. Holes that just... Just, you know, it's, it's the whole thing is wrong, but instead, you know, they, they don't want to teach these kind of things in school. Why? Because it's the best theory they've come up with so far. It's wrong. They know it's wrong, but they still teach it. Going back to the theory of evolution, Charles Darwin, as an old man, said that that guy, was a young, ignorant kid trying to make his mark on science. See, this is how this is how science works, okay? Let me let, let me let you in on a secret. Okay? They have really smart people that think up ideas. Sometimes they're really dumb ideas. Okay. I mean, can you imagine the first person that thought up of electricity? You know, I mean, how many times did he get shocked? That's what happens if I put my hands, this is the holy crap. All right, let's do this. If I do, no oh, crap. All right, let's try. Oh, wow. Okay, that's what happens. Okay. 
you have a thought, sometimes a pretty stupid thought, sometimes it's the best of intentions that have really bad outcomes. Sometimes that happens. That's science. It's about trial and error. It's about measuring and proving. That's science. But you come up with, or you, you, you start with a premise or an idea. It's, it's, it's in solving a problem, having a puzzle, and you, you come up with a theory theory of evolution, the theory of relativity. You name the theory, but that's what you have. And then you spend time trying to prove or disprove your theory. Charles Darwin came up with the theory of evolution as an old man. He had already disproven his own theory and said of his young self that that guy was an idiot. Trying to make his mark. On science, as an old man, he proved, or I'm sorry, as an old man, he disproved science to the point of coming a believer. I don't know exactly what religion he subscribed to. I don't know. I'm wanting to say it was Christianity, but I'm not 100% sure. So he went from theory of evolution removing creation and intelligent design completely from the table. He went to prove his theory to the rest of the scientific community, was unable to do so, and in his efforts in trying to disprove, he became a believer. How amazing is that? There's another guy. There, there's an artist, Lee Strobel, maybe, I think, the case for Christ, the case for religion, the Case for This, That, and the Other. Very good book series. I highly recommend at least those two, Case for Christ, Case for Religion. Definitely recommend those two. But let's go ahead and talk about the last thing. We're coming up on 40 minutes now. I don't want to do this too late, but, but this is where it gets fun. This is where it gets good. I got to take a drink of my coffee. Oh, yeah. Mm. Coffee. Okay. I need you I need you to buckle up for a second, okay? We're going to start off with well not start off with. But we're going to talk DNA. We're going to talk complexities about a few things, okay? We're not going to go too far in the weeds. All right? But this is where it gets fun. In dealing with the theory of evolution, Okay. Okay. One, let's just, let's just call a spade a spade. It's crap. It is absolutely crap because what they would have you, what, what they would have you believe. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever watched the discovery channel. Okay. Animals and how they react with other animals in the wild. Okay. But what they would have you believe that evolution started off as this animal. And then there was, you know, over the course of billions and billions of years, there were these little micro things that happened, but yet were significant enough to be different. And, but not just one aminal in that, you know, race of, 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 of aminal, but multiple enough to, um, you know, breed and, and make more of them. That, that's, that's how that happened. Okay. That's what they would have you believe that this was something that took many, many years and a long freaking time. I don't, I don't even know how many years they try to claim that this happened, but that's what they say happened, okay? This, somehow it's, it's, it's DNA altering, and, and then you get something else. And it happened multiple times at the same time they were able to breed and there you go. Or, you know, they bred with each other and then came up with something new. But yet we already know that in certain cases that just isn't a fact. Take, take the union between a donkey and a, or I'm sorry, a horse and a mule. You get a donkey. Donkeys can't reproduce in the wild. You get a tiger and a lion. They reproduce. You get a liger, and they are absolutely amazing. A huge freaking cat that's got amazing murder mittens, but they can't reproduce. They are sterile. So we see evidence of where this theory falls apart, and you think that that only started happening now? 
anyway, but that's what they say happens. Okay, that, that's what they say happens. Now, here's the thing. Going back to this whole concept of watching the Discovery Channel, have you ever seen what happens to an animal that is made different in their own pack? We're talking about pack animals, okay? Have you ever seen what happens, you know, with horses, with, with dogs, with, with whatever else? Name, name the animal, and there's a lot of them out there, that if something is made different, it is feared. It isn't feared, but its ability to survive is feared by the rest of the pack. I have seen animals, horses, in the wild that have given birth to other horses that were made different. And because it jeopardizes the safety of the, of the entirety of the rest of the herd, those animals were killed. That's how the jungle deals with with change. You can watch the Discovery Channel and you can see that firsthand and it sometimes gets brutal. But that's how the wild deals with change. The zebra has its stripes for a reason. When an albino was born, it removes the illusion, the adaptation that was given to the animal to make it blend in. When they are on their own, they stick out like a sore thumb. Hence the albino. Hence the one that was born different. Will it survive? No. Because it can't blend. And the nicest thing to do would be to kill it beforehand. That's the compassionate thing to do. And that's what you see play out in, in the wild. Things that are born different do not survive. They are not welcomed. But yet, even though we see this play out on the Discovery Channel, that is what science would have you believe. You're not, you, you don't, you don't, you're, you're not following me. Okay. Let's take this a different route. Let's take this a different route. If we came from this to that, from that to the other, and from the other to another, and the other, another, then the mother, and then the dad and the cat and the dog, you get cat dog. And, well, where's the cat dog? Where's the cat dog? If we came from this, that, and to the other, if, if it was cat and then dog or, you know, frog and then, I don't know, iguana, then there's something in the middle. There's something that links the two. Where is Sasquatch? That's what I want to know. And I'm not talking to Sasquatch to, uh, of the missing link between ape ape and man. I'm talking the missing link around all of creation. There's a link between plant and animal. There's a link, and I'm not even talking about the flycatcher. There's a link between every single form of life and the other. There is a link. Where is the missing link? It doesn't exist. It is gone. It's never been and isn't real. No fossilized evidence has ever shown the missing link. Yeah, we may have Neanderthal, we may have this, we may have this, we may have the other. But here's the crazy thing. Um, we don't have big, huge amounts of a butt ton of them found in one place. And, and, and in fact, we don't really see that. You know, we see bits and pieces but we don't really see a lot in one place. And, and when we do, that can, you know, I mean, hey, what did we do to lepers back in the day? And, and they were deformed. They had things wrong with them. You know, what? and they're not the only ones, and it's not the only time in history that we've ever done that. Exiled people that were sick, they didn't survive. Every step of the evolutionary ladder, whenever I was in high school, I was taking a class, and I have seen, as part of genetic mutations, that weren't, that, that were about from the time when I was born, okay, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Every step 
of the evolutionary ladder of where we came from, of where science says that we came from, I've seen those in pictures that were around the same time frame I was born of people living. And they looked like these various stages of evolution. But yet, they believe in the various stages of evolution, even though I've seen a Neanderthal. It was a sad thing, but I've seen it. Okay. Let's go a different direction on this. Okay, let's get into... DNA. The last episode was just to warm you up to get to this very conversation right here. Yeah, I've just made it difficult with you. Talking about dynamics and physics and whatnot. Talking about that. I haven't even really gotten into the, uh, you know, the fragility of the universe. Let's just say that it is, you know, like the, with the pin balancing on its needle. If anything is thrown out of whack, the whole thing goes kaplooey. We get too far away, we freeze. We get too close together, and we burn up. Okay. Now we're getting getting into DNA again. Because remember how I told you that, that a computer program is all built off of binary, ones and zeros, but the entirety of the blueprint of human life in DNA is A, T, C, and G. Four nucleotides, and that's what makes up the entirety. That's the blueprint that you were built on. A strand of DNA, when laid flat, is six feet freaking long. That is holy crap. But here's the thing, though, okay? Here's one of the things that we learn in science, and that's talking about, you know, with, with okay, well, let, let, me, let me start right here, okay? A dog. I have a dog. She's an amazing dog. Her name's Marley. She is an Australian cattle dog. Now, I got another buddy of mine. They've got some pit bulls. Pit bulls are amazing. I had another buddy of mine. She's got, you know, the, the Great Danes. Another buddy of mine. They've got, you know, they've got um, um, a Mastiff. Another buddy of mine has got, um, oh, what the crap is that? A poodle, I think, you know. Um, I got, uh, whenever I was growing up, I had... Uh, Cocker Spaniel, whenever, you know, I had a, a, an uncle of mine, they've got, they got Yorkies. They love Yorkies. Now, here's the thing. Okay, you take a Yorkie, little bitty, just, oh, you're just so cute. Just picture it in your hand, pet it. Oh, it's so cute. Now take a Mastiff. That freaking tall from the ground. Holy crap. And I am not kidding. Have you ever seen a Mastiff? They are ginormous. They're so freaking huge. And can you, ima can you believe the, the Yorkie and the Mastiff started off as the same freaking animal. Canine. From a wolf. Now, before you tell me that, oh, yeah, well, there's evolution. That proves it right there. Well, no, 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 no. No, it does not. Because that wasn't evolution that made those changes. That was us. That was mankind because we're a bunch of freaking meddlers. We used selective breeding to alter the animal. And that's what we did. The pug, the chihuahua. Yeah, that was us. Not all of our choices has been good. Some of them really make absolutely no sense. But it was us selective breeding that would find a trait, whether it be physical or behavioral, and then we would breed certain things that we wanted in the animal and certain things that we didn't want into the animal regarding size, what they did, intelligence, different things of that nature. Activity, you know, a golden retriever was bred to retrieve things, you know, but we did that. That was us. That was selective breeding. That's not evolution. That's, that's, that's not even adaptation. That's breeding. And we did that. But here's where it gets crazy, okay? Remember how I said that that whole DNA is the blueprint 
that the cells use to build you. Now, here's the thing. That came from one animal. The Mastiff, the Yorkie, started off as one animal. It was breeding that bred certain traits, characteristics, and otherwise out of the animal. But here's the cool part. The DNA, I don't want to say is the same, but let's just say the blueprint, the kernel that it was built on, okay? Now, if you, you're an Android user, you know you got this kernel and that kernel and everything else, but it's, that's the, the basic building block of what the thing is built off of, okay? It's, 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 it's a canine meninimus, and, and that's where canines are, okay? Homo sapien, but you got race, you got gender, you got all these other kind of stuff tagged onto it, but at its core, they're all the same human he, homo sapien. The same thing goes whenever it came, comes to canine. It's, it's Biffy Diffy scientific name. The same family. Now, here's the thing. The DNA has the p- blueprint, the building blocks for every single thing in its family. The, the, at least... That's how it is with the dog and the wolf because that wasn't evolution. That was us meddling. The blueprint to make, the building plans to make a mastiff can be found in the pug. That blows my mind. But that's the truth. It's in there through genes because, you know, yes, you got DNA, which is the building block that that determines all kinds of things. But beyond that and within that is, is genes, things that line up recessive gene and dominant gene. These are things that we learn in school. And that is amazing. So the building blocks to build a mastiff can be found within the pug. We made all of these changes ourselves. And using selective breeding, we can breed all of that back out and come back to wolf if we so choose. We are meddlers. That's what we did. Did you know? Now you do. Oh, but wait, there's more. There is so much more. Just as in, we're going to tie a couple things together. Just as in. The building blocks to make the Mastiff can be found within the pug and vice versa. If the theory of evolution is true and we all came from one, then within your DNA, the building blocks to make a giant redwood tree can be found in you. What? Yeah. That means that things like Groot, imaginary fictional creatures that was made for the sake and thought up of in somebody's head by their own imagination, is completely possible. If the theory of evolution stands, the DNA that make up the tree would also be found in you, somewhere buried within the three million characters that makes up your DNA. It would be found in there somewhere. So there is absolutely no reason why, if the theory of evolution is true, that a creature like Groot is possible. It absolutely is. There is no reason why you can't walk around someday and then all of a sudden a leaf spurts out of your head. If the theory of evolution is real and we all came from one and out of one many, All of that is found within each individual DNA strand. That's freaking science. That's the complexity of DNA. That's what we have learned so far in science. But not only is there no link connecting each stage of evolution, the stage between dog and cat and horse and mule and, and this and that and the other and plant and animal. Yes, we have the duckbill platypus, but there's an exception to every rule. And the duckbill platypus is, is, is that exception. <laughs> but all the DNA, the, the, the building blocks would be found in it somewhere. And it's not. It's not. 
the theory of evolution is so flawed. It's, it's amazing it was even a theory in the first place. But the thing is, and, and this is one of the things that I talked about a little bit earlier, it all has to do with power. Because remember, it wasn't the church that abandoned science. It was science that ran from and abandoned and tried to disprove religion because science was the thing that wanted to be worshipped. It didn't want to worship. So it used falsities and lies. And even after they proved them wrong because it was the best answer, the best solution that they had, and they could not, would not, refused to even accept the possibility of intelligent design, they never would acknowledge the clear, true winner. Intelligent design. It baffles the mind. Science, in truth, screams and proves intelligent design. DNA, adaptation, and breeding proves the falsity of evolution. So much to the point that it is beyond me why anybody, how anybody can possibly think it's true. It blows the mind. But what it simply amounts to is this. And this is really where the rubber meets the road. If creation is real, if intelligent design is how we all got here, then that changes everything. It really does. It changes everything. You know, it, if it is real, then you have to change every single thing about you. You know, if you are secular and not sacred, you have to change everything to adopt secular or to adopt sacred. You know, if you're secular and if the secular is a lie, then your perception, your reality has to change and that's going to change what you do and you are going to become sacred. And some people just aren't willing to make that change. They don't care how much proof you give them. They will never accept the premise because, yeah, they may know that the stake is a lie, but ignorance is bliss. They will never seize the truth because that would mean they have to change everything. And most people on its surface just are not willing to do that. That's why you got to take baby steps. That's why whenever you are leading somebody from one premise to another, one truth to another, one reality to another, you got to do it in small steps. Otherwise, they will never accept. They will never change, ever. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's how you do it. Otherwise, it's impossible. And something as massive, as big, as trying to explain to somebody intelligent design using the vastness of the universe is a huge pill to swallow. And I'm still not even scratching the surface. It's enough. But I'm still not even scratching the surface. I didn't even get into space time. We ain't got time for that. What if I told you, just going into space time, just to ask you a simple question, what if I told you because in our reality, how we view reality, we see, we live in multiple heights at the same time. We live in multiple widths at the same time. We live in multiple uh, depths at the same time. We are three-dimensional beings. But we also live in one place and in one time. There's something beyond that. 
fourth dimensional beings, fifth dimensional beings, because some things live in multiple places at multiple times. Now, here's the thing. Within our three-dimensional world, we believe that time is a constant. Space is, it's a, it's a variable, but within boundaries. And speed is a variable. That's what we think as three-dimensional beings. But what if I told you that time isn't the constant. Space doesn't necessarily matter. But speed is the constant. As a truck driver, I go into multiple time zones. Okay? My phone, because I like keeping things in, in the time zone that I'm in, central time, okay, Because I like to do this, I, I changed the setting in my phone. That I, I told it to, instead of automatically updating the time, it would stay static. This way, whenever I changed from one time zone to another, it didn't actually change the time. It kept it set on, on central time, okay? In the course of a year, the time had changed so far away from network time that whenever I would send and receive text messages, they didn't line up. They, they were off. The times were different in the course of one year. Time had changed by somewhere between 13 and 14 minutes in the course of one year. Because the fact of the matter is the faster you are moving through space, the slower you are moving through time. I'm a truck driver. I travel a lot in one year's time. 13 minutes. We don't notice this because we use a device that usually updates most people. I'm 13 minutes younger in the course of one year as compared to somebody that doesn't travel the way I do. Because time is a variable. Speed is is a constant. The faster you move through space, the slower you are moving through time. That is amazing. That is so cool. <laughs> I can explain that one more, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. That's a... Speed of light, ladies and gentlemen, and that is so cool. All right, anyway, you know what? That That's all I got, all right? I hope... You've been able to gleam a little bit out of this. I hope you've learned a little something that, that just makes it easier for you to believe. Okay, to, to a believer, no amount of proof is necessary. To a non-believer, no amount of proof is adequate. To some people that are just hell-bent. Yeah, yeah, wow. To, for some people, they're just hell-bent on believing in a lie. Because they think somehow the lie gives them power. And with Christianity, you have to, Christianity? Christianity, you've got to surrender what you think you know to accept a different truth. But in doing so, you gain freedom. Most people don't understand how that works because all they see is a sacrifice. They don't see the reward. They don't see the benefit. They just don't. Baby steps. These, these past two episodes were so much fun. They really were. Some things in there to just blow your mind. Now, we got something else. I mean, we got, I got some episodes we're going to be talking about. I mean, we're going to be talking about um, the Holy Trinity. We're going to be talking about, I mean, let, let me just give you a quick rundown of, of some of the episodes we've got coming. All right, so, uh, nope, I already did that one. Nope, I already did that one. Uh, yeah, boys becoming men. Yeah, yeah, because manhood, okay. Being a man is, is hard. We've got responsibilities. We've got, we have something we have to do. And we are responsible. We are held accountable for those things that we're supposed to do. We don't have the option to step outside of that. We are held accountable. It's weird. 
Anyway, Holy Trinity. Yeah. The Oh, yeah. Faith being a journey. Jenna did that one. False prophet, false idols. Those are still coming, by the way. DNA did that one. Missing Link covered that one. Walking on Water. And the greatest conspiracy known to man. Actually, yeah, the next two episodes are going to be pretty awesome because I'm going to be covering, you know, I'm going to be covering the Holy Trinity and I'm going to be covering the greatest conspiracy that man has ever concocted. Those are going to be the next two episodes. All right, guys, that's all I got. Y'all just have yourself a great one. It has been fun. See you in the next one. Thank you for listening to Religion Ho-Ho's Way. For a complete listing of episodes and shows, you can head to thehohoshow.com and click on the episode tab. See you next time.